what's your system? You, I mean, you just said yeah. like, I'm the master failure, right? And uh, and and that's totally okay. We oh, totally we it. dig it because we're like that. We're like, oh my God, like how can I fail faster, mm -hmm. you know, so I can learn faster. Right. What's your process? Because a lot of people are like, okay, you know, I, uh, it, I, I'm in peace with failing, but now I don't know what to do after failure. Like yep. it's gonna be a, a train wreck. So what's your process? What can you say to people like, okay, how can, how can you get up from that failure and move forward? Yeah, I, I think it's really simple. As, as difficult as it might sound, going at it with the mindset of knowing that you're gonna fail. And I don't mean this in like a, because trust me, like I believe, like I said, when I, when I say I believe in mindset, it's mindset is everything. Mindset is everything, but people believe that mindset has to be 100% focused on, I am X at a thousand percent, right? <laughs> that would be great. Not everybody starts at that level. So if you're starting from ground zero, which I've, I've just always stayed curious. And yeah. that's mm. what really has fueled my, um, my growth as a person in general. It's just something I never knew this before, but apparently my friends tell me all the time that like not everyone in the world is like me. And I think <laughs> that I don't understand why, because yeah, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that failure doesn't hurt, right? It sucks. I mean, you can fail at relationships, you can fail at career choices, which I didn't really have direction when I was younger in, in deciding exactly what I wanted, but I think it was the purpose of all of this to begin mm -hmm. with, right? Like there was a reason for all of these things to happen. So if you can think that, okay, like this wasn't a success, but it was supposed to happen because it was going to teach me something. And yeah. what did I learn from this? And take one thing, don't like ruminate on stuff. <laughs> don't sit there and it's not about you. It really, yeah. in truly, it really is not about you, right? Like you can sit yeah. here and plan everything out. Perfect example is, you know, we went through this whole entire pandemic. So my outside job, I'm actually in sales, uh, medical sales, but you know, we were doing great. I was, uh, I was uh, projected to do one of my best years period. And this pandemic happened and like, nobody wants to go to do procedures or anything. Um, that's not your most basic thing. And every single person now thinks they have coronavirus. Yeah. And so it's like, oh man, you know, I, I'd already planned out everything for the year and all this stuff. But you know, like I said, you can sit here and plan everything out to the T and yeah. you could still get it wrong. So why not just prepare yourself to be flexible? Yeah, mm -hmm. plan yourself out. And this is also me too. Like I plan about 75% of things and 25% is for that ability to be flexible because look, you know, we have the ability to create. This is a space in which I'm creating from the ground up. So yeah. I don't want it to be so, um, so pigeonholed and so in a box that I don't give people the ability to give me some feedback so I can continue to provide the audience and also the podcasters what they want. Yeah. Right. So I have to remain somewhat flexible. There is a lot of, um, you know, legal work that needs to be done in general. I mean, that's just protection for everybody, but at the same time, there is flexibility on the back end is to say, all right, maybe this podcaster wants something a little bit different. Is there something that makes them unique that can help us create yeah. some sort of a negotiation opportunity there for both of us, right? Not always being 100% super rigid and understanding that if the plan doesn't work out the way it's supposed to, it's yeah. okay because that's the way it was supposed to work out in the first place.